Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you for having me tonight to uh, this month's meeting. Uh, for the record, my name is Daniel Toscano. The law office address is 62B Commercial Walk East, Boston, Mass. 02110. I represent uh, Mr. Jim Ferreira to my immediate left, who's, who's uh, sitting here. And Jim owns unit number two at 57 Snowville Street. I'll talk about the, the project in a little bit, but what we'd like to do is seek your support to expand the living space on that the penthouse there, really creating an addition on that particular uh, story and as uh, Add some living space right now. The head house occupies about 52 square feet. I'd like to expand that to 245 square feet. So, in turn, we're creating an addition of uh, 193 square feet on top of that roof. What I've done for you, what you you'll see on a number of the tables, a number of photos um, that I passed out, and I just go through the photos. What they show is the first going up. Um, left to right in, in the bottom, uh, what the proposal is likely to look like. When I say likely, certainly there is room for change, and especially since the fact that we have to go through design review process, design review with the BRA, which is the Boston Redevelopment Authority, and also giving the distance to the park area, which is the Buffalo Park, if it's within 100 feet of that park and it hasn't been measured yet, but if it's within 100 feet, we have to have Parks Department review. So what Parks Department BRA will look at is the material that's going to be used, which Mr. Ferrer has indicated he'd like to really complement what we saw at um, the influence of what we saw at 93 Charter Street, which is like a, a copper uh, tone material. So, But also the design, BRA will also look at the design, and Parks will also look at color, design, and everything else. So what you're seeing really on the pitches is in terms of the roof deck and what we, we heard from the DLC as how much roof is this addition going to take up. So the pitches that we show is, it, it, it'll show you how it takes up the majority of the roof. The last photo that we see is really a side-by-side -side, uh, picture which you, you have here is what the proposal is to look like the new addition compared to what's there now, which is the, the, the black uh, dilapidated head house there. So I'll refer to these pictures during my proposal um, when I get back to it. So in regards to, and I apologize, I don't know what happened to my easel. It was in my office. Stephen might have took it. And, uh, but I'll tell you a little bit about this building. Currently, um, according to the zoning record, it's a three-family uh, residential unit. However, it, it's really a two right now. There are two owners. Uh, one, the first floor owner, which is unit one, and then Jim owns unit two. Unit one occupies the ground level floor, first floor, and the second floor. That's one unit. All right, so it's one unit. And unit two, which Jim purchased, is the third floor and the fourth floor and the right side roof. And what we want to do is create the addition, so we occupy the fifth floor. In terms of the height, which is very important to this particular neighborhood, uh, we have a 55-foot height limit. This project is not going over 55 feet. Matter of fact, this project is going to remain at its existing height, which is up to here, which is to the point which is 52 feet 8 inches which is measured when I was speaking with the architect because it was a real concern of how do you, how do you measure it? it. And it's done by laser. And you know, the architect takes a laser, laser gun, however they measure it, I don't know. But it is done very, by various floors, and that's how we, we get up to 52 eight, which is the current height, and that's gonna be the current height of the, of the addition. It's not gonna go any higher than that. Um, as I, as I had mentioned, it's going to be approximately a, an addition of 193 square feet. Now, this is a picture that you don't have on your table, but hopefully I'm more than happy to pass it around and if you need to see it a little closer, just to show you how, how much roof this is taken up, is the roof right now from front, from the Snow Hill Street, from the front to the back of the building is approximately 24 and a half uh, feet. So the addition is going to be from front to back approximately 15 feet and also width wise um, width wise I apologize I didn't have it 
Oh, from, from width-wise, from front, from the front of the building on Snow Hill Street is about 18 feet, and as it gets to the back, it narrows down to 16 feet. So in the front, we're going to have, it's going to measure 16 feet across, and then going back to the back of the building, from front to back, the new addition is going to be 15 feet across. Okay, so it just shows you how much space. So when everything's said and done, you're going to have approximately three to four feet on each side, but in the front of the building, at the corner here, it's going to be approximately three feet, but as it gets towards the back of the building, it's going to get down to about one foot. So that's why we're proposing also in this um, addition is a 44, a 42 inch really to go around the roof's edge just for safety reasons because there will be access to the roof to, uh, from that particular addition. Now, what, well, you know, so what are the, the negatives as about this particular project that I see is one, and we talked about, this is from our past meetings and talked about our residents is, it's changed. This is changing the look of this particular area. As you look out into from Charter Street coming down, there's nothing like this in this particular area. So people have concerns that, that it's changing the character of that area. And two is, as we mentioned at the ZLC, this is primarily, this is gonna be a, a rental, a rental um, unit. However, there is the intent after some years that uh, Jim has a family of four, his oldest son who just graduated. Well, um, the goal is to get the son in there and to move in once he gets situated work-wise, but let's not make no mistakes. This is gonna be a rental property for a few years until the son is situated. Now, those are the negatives that I see about the positives, and I'm looking at what's the benefits of this, of this um, particular project. What's there now is a dilapidated eyesore. It's a 54 square foot black box uh, with a green door. What we like to do is certainly propose uh, the proposal is much nicer, tasteful, classy. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna look a lot better than what's there now, especially as you're on Cobbs Hill Cemetery or if you come down to Charter Street. So, and I've done it a couple of times just to, in particular, just to look at that particular area. When you come over, you see 93 Charter Street with that beautiful addition. You got a great attorney on that project too. And um, also, when you, when you come over, you see that area of, of, of Snow Hill Street and, and, and also not Hudson Street, some of the buildings. This is gonna be a beautiful vision as you come over Charter Street and down towards the skating rink. Um, now, number two that I, that I look at what's, um, what's important is this is this was a multi-family residential unit uh, building for some years. It's now decreased in size. I know we always have the concerns of students and, and too many people, live, no, I don't want to say too many people live in the, in the neighborhood, but we're crowding out residential units with, with y'all are young folks, and which in turn creates noise and everything else. So we are downsizing. This is going from a multi-family to, to really just a two-family residential unit. The first floor unit owner actually lives in the in the building, so that's important. Uh, you know, it's important to Jim, so this building will be very taken care of very well. Um, another issue, and I apologize that I'm speaking fast and going to have other things, and I know we're running behind, is tenant restrictions. There was a concern with students. Who are you going to rent to? If it's going to be rental property, in the um, in the deed, uh, there are some restrictions. Cannot rent to any student. Cannot rent to any college students or any graduate students. Can this is a two-bedroom unit? Cannot rent to any more than two individuals, and also you cannot rent to more than one family. So if it's one family, great. That's what we would love to see. No more than two individuals <coughs> and, and no students whatsoever, whether you're college or rather graduate. So there are restrictions, and some that Jim and the and the owner of the first floor unit uh, took serious and took the concerns of the neighborhood in place when thinking about that. The other thing is our uh, roof deck. There is, although there is outdoor space, now, and we have access to this outdoor space, there is no roof deck. It's not gonna be a roof deck on top of the addition. Um, there is access to uh, outdoor space. Like I said, there's probably gonna be three to four feet on each side after everything's said and done. In the front, it, it curves down to about a foot, really not really utilized. However, there will be some space, but there is not a roof deck out there. In the back of the property, there will be some space that overlooks the water. However, what we'll see on the back of the, 
of this edition as we're looking at this particular photo here. In this corner, there is um, heat, heating ducts and uh, condenser there, condenser unit, which will probably remain in this particular, in this corner, which overlooks uh, um, the funeral home. The, the other positive that I see, and I look at this particular area, looking at some of the photos, this building is higher than some of the others. It's higher than the ones that are going down. It's about, this is the third building in from Charter Street. The two buildings going down to Charter Street are, uh, are smaller in size. The buildings that are to the left, there's two of them that are also smaller in size. And then there's one, that I think we hit about not Hudson Street, but it's a little higher. This addition is not gonna block, which is very important where <coughs> we always see when there's addition going on then, but it's not gonna block any views, any sunlight, by the air flow in this particular area. There's nothing behind them. There's nothing on the sides that they're going to use. The sides not going to block anything. Certainly, so different the vision, the view would be different from certain certain windows, but it's certainly not going to block any view, sunlight, or airflow. Um, the other thing is, it's going to increase the value of the property. Not only is you know Mr. Ferreira's unit and the pro the building property, but also the properties in in, in the abutters. Uh, in that particular area, um, Mr. Ferreira spoke to some of us, and some of us have certainly expressed an interest in maybe possibly going up one day. But there is an interest because it does increase the value of the properties in that particular area, and it'll, and it'll look nice. And then the last thing uh, I want to add, and just to really touch upon as I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to the City Council of La Matina, and he talks about 585 uh, Commercial Street, and the mayor purchased the property for a school. And, you know, in why is that? Why is it that we needed another school in this neighborhood? And, I, and I'll tell you why, because we have more families moving into this neighborhood. We have more families staying in this neighborhood. And I know this firsthand, being very active, coaching soccer, coaching baseball, starting a hockey program, very active in the sporting programs here in the neighborhood. I see that we have over 100 kids playing soccer, well over 100 kids in our baseball league that we go from T-ball to, to the majors, and I've seen this with our hockey program. So we have families that are staying. Years ago, we had a lot of families that didn't have enough space. We're moving out, couldn't afford it. We're moving out, and, our, and the kids and a lot of the programs suffer because all our families moving in. So what am I saying here? Why do I say this? It's because this gives an opportunity for family to stay in the neighborhood. Um, and also, this is an opportunity that we see. We see a lot of folks that live out in the suburbs, their children grow older, they move out, and maybe the parents want to move into the city or want a spacious uh, location to live. This provides that type of atmosphere. This is something that Jim is putting a tremendous amount of money into the building, uh, into that unit, and everything is going to be top shelf. He's going to be very particular of who he rents to, um, certainly to, to keep the value of the property. I'm done. I'll ask any questions. I need to be done that, okay? I mean, if the council of the team talk so long, you should have cut it on. That was the longest presentation I ever recorded. And he wasn't worth the pieces. Okay, let us start with uh, abutters. Any abutters to this property would like to speak? That's why I was talking to Scott. Can you introduce yourself, please? I'm Leslie Ledka, and I'm except I'm not really clear on what this is going to look like. Is that actually what it's going to look like? No, and like I said, it's, it's not actually. It's going to change it because we have to go to design review, number one. We have to go to probably POPs also review, so it will change. And then Jim, I think, hasn't really finalized the shape of it in terms of the material. So, will we have but, an opportunity to see that? Oh, more than happy to, to make sure we do. And even if, if, we, if we don't, and I recall it's very uh, helpful in our Baldwin Place project where we got together with some of the residents who have concerns, sit down with BRA design review at a community meeting to make sure that the abutters were happy. And that's also, um, we can do that too with this project. Because if Nicole doesn't allow BRA to stand by our plans, go back to ISD, it's not getting approved. Okay, any other abutters? Uh, nearing East Snow Hill Street, I'm not the immediate abutter, but I do live on that mm -hmm. uh, part of Snow Hill Street that be is between um, Hall and Charter, which if you're familiar with it, it's a really nice part of the North End, but it's mostly owner-occupied. 
And I would just like to say that to, um, to me, to approve something like this really creates a terrible precedent. Um, I have no problem whatsoever with accommodating existing residents who need more space. We've done that many times. I'm sure we will do it in the future. I'm all for that. And if a family comes in and they want more space to stay here, I'm all for that. Here is someone who does not live in the neighborhood. It's one more absentee landlord who wants one thing, and that is to make his space more rentable. He just bought it. He knew what he was buying. So why do we have to accommodate his desire to make his place more rentable? I really don't see that. We really need to start thinking about cause and effect in this neighborhood. More absentee landlords with more space to cram more people into is not a benefit. It doesn't make my property more valuable if I have more noise, more garbage, et cetera, on my space, on my street. So that is how I feel as somebody who lives there, but just as a resident of the North End in general. Thank you, dear. OK, does anyone have any yeah, general questions? I am okay. the owner of the first level who sold Jim upstairs. Um, if you'd like to read the documents, the condo documents, I don't have a problem with Jim adding more space because he's very responsible. He's putting a lot of money upstairs. He's going to upgrade this building. I put a lot of money downstairs. I own three levels. I'm living there. It's owner occupied. And I think it's a great project as long as it doesn't block anybody's view. I think it'll be fine. It's in the condo documents. We've gone over these. There will be no students allowed in that unit, none. I don't care if they're graduate students, undergraduate. They're not allowed. It's in the documents. And if here you're welcome to read them. I'm very strict. Jim's very strict about who we rent in there. And I'm going to be living there. So. As far as the noise level and the party, and that is never going to happen. I'm a long-time resident of the North End. We've owned this building since 1972. He's upgrading it. It's going to be beautiful. I mean, that's my input. I think it's a good project. Good. Thank you. And I'm living there, right. so. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Nikki? Uh, yeah, Nikki um, Raptor, Prince Street. Maybe it will be beautiful, but at the moment, I mean, maybe this isn't the way it's going to look. But the fabric of the building does not match the fabric. I mean, of the addition doesn't match the fabric of the building. Um, it's not. It doesn't even look to be brick. And then the the railing is a completely different design from the other railings in the immediate vicinity. So if it's done, it should be well, done to. Uh -huh. Railing certainly can seem to be a change. It turns out the color of how else it is. Certainly the color, and I spoke with the architect about it when he, when he sent me the pictures, certainly doesn't look at exactly how the color it comes out a lot lighter. This is not exact what was important in, in regards to showing the photos and what we saw of the ZLC. I uh, heard from the ZLC is to show what the mass of the addition will look like on the roof. So in terms of the design, it, it, it's, it's going to probably change in terms of the design, and especially since we have to go to BRA to view. And like I said, likely, depending on within 100 feet, we gotta go to parks to view. Will it be brick? Will it be brick? I mean, I don't think so. I, I, I found that the, uh, the head house over at Charter Street had a really great look to it. And that's what I put to model it after. What is it made of? It used to be a long glass with copper. Um, oh, I see. You didn't say copper. Well, you, right. The this, color of that it certainly doesn't show it, it exactly. Doesn't, right. It doesn't right. seem to harmonize with the buildings in the neighborhood. Thanks, Nikki. A couple of questions. Uh, did you approach the owners in both number 56 and number 58 Charter Street and provide some at least preliminary plans 
to them. And the second question is, will there be windows just in the front and back, or will there be windows on the side facing the existing roof deck at number 58? If there is, there's going to be windows front and back. Side, you have to meet certain requirements. You can't have windows that, if you're on the crappie edge of, of a budding crappie, you can't have windows overlooking that um, property line so on both sides. Unless, you know, when we're brought in, see how it's brought in on each side, you can have a certain size window. So will there be the windows um, facing the existing roof deck on, on, on the, the sides? Yeah. Hope to have something on an elevated uh, part of the building, not, not you know, floor to sail, but okay. something to capture <coughs> the water here that would be above. The abutters, I send notices and um, through the requirements of the Residents Association, I send notices and I, I really cover the, the entire Okay, but that's different. That's the main yeah. notification. Something that the ZLC committee always pushes, and we pushed it at this meeting as well, is that anyone doing a project uh, should at least uh, approach the owners of the buildings on either side and share the construction plans with those owners. That's just common. I, I think Jim has done that. At a, at a minimum. But if uh, Ms. Leslie's here. And, and the second thing right. I want to say is that we typically do see the designs, for, not necessarily the final, but at least the concept design uh, for the architectural features, the windows, and, and alike for these projects when we vote on them. I understand that that may not be necessary for a Board of Appeal to vote on it, but I think it is necessary for a neighborhood to vote on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, would anyone uh, like to speak for or against this proposal? Okay, good. How about a uh, motion to vote yes or no? What are our votes? Second. Okay, thank you. We're going to use number one, the blue ballot. You can circle either support or vote. Very close, it's one vote the party actually. 14 support and 13 opposed. So it's absolutely much of Just the president, members of the association, as always, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you.